Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm stuck in a suite. Okay, okay. I know it's very rude. This will give you some insight into how I plan these videos. In other words, I don't. I get in the car. I then uh, think to myself, can I make a coherent argument in 20 minutes? And if the answer is no, I carry on sucking. But sometimes the answer is yes. So can I make a coherent argument about something? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you be the judge of that. Right? There are two things going on at the moment. The England women's football team has just lost the World Cup final against the Spanish, which I think that the uh, powers that be will judge that to be a success because, you know, it generated a lot of news. It justifies the, uh, the sports departments, the sports reporters. Uh, I'm going to put my window in. Shall I, shall I? Yeah, go on. Today is the first sort of autumnal day. As you can see, very misty, much cooler. But apparently we've got some more warm weather coming in. So, But as soon as the flying season starts, it finishes. So there you are. So, I mean, women's football wasn't a thing, and now it's a thing. I think that's the success that's going to be that's going to come out of that. Not that we won any money or that the women achieved parity of wages with the men or we got a trophy or anything. I mean, to be honest, the uh, uh, women were completely outplayed. And it was obvious to the audience that they were being completely outplayed, but not to the commentators. Now you would think, wouldn't you, that the commentators have been picked for their insight and for their uh, on-the-spot analysis, both tactical and strategic. Get out of his way. And yet, they failed to mention the fact that we were getting completely outplayed by the Spanish. So that's the theme of my homily, today's homily. Is people who see something but they don't say anything about it they don't they know what they're looking at they are they know what they're looking at but they don't mention it or perhaps they are looking at something and they don't know what they're looking at and when they should do so these sports commentators they don't want you know, there's a lot of people that are very blind and just support the team and don't really even know what good football is. It's just very tribal, you know? Same way as lots of people in this country are very tribal about the country, but really haven't got a clue about how it's run economically or militarily or the judicial system or anything like that. They just, you know, and it's the same in the United States, the USA, USA sort of mentality. But they know that their job depends on them not mentioning the fact that we're rubbish. Because they want to pander to this crowd, this, this constituency, that wants to think that we are, you know, we're in with a chance. And let's face it, if they played as something approaching their, their best, we might have been in with a chance, but for some reason at the end of the day, we just the team just didn't turn up. Well, the team did, but the talent didn't. So, there you've got uh, 90 minutes of embarrassment with the more, you know, the better informed members of the audience knowing what's going on and the commentators trying to pretend that it wasn't. And then saying, oh, what a good effort, you know, and didn't they do so well to get through to the final, blah, blah, blah. 
Oh, humbug. Then you've got a, another another mass murderer in the NHS. The latest, not the last, I'm sure. Girl who's decided to murder a load of babies. You know, in the tradition of nurses that murder babies, which we've had before. And it's all about like lessons will be learned, lessons will be learned. Well, lessons aren't learned. Lessons won't be learned. That's the funny thing. What they ought to do, the lesson that they need to learn is why lessons are never learned. But they never learn that lesson. Why she killed those children is open to debate. I remember a, a, a very famous, uh, I, I forget who said it, it might have been Dawkins, who said that uh, we, don't, we know nothing about mental, you know, why, why people are, how they are mentally. We know, we understand some of the grosser traits of, say, psychopathy. We don't really understand why you're born like that how you get like that, what it is that makes you that. And he quoted um, John Cleese playing Basil Fawlty in Fawlty Towers when his car broke down and his response was to get a branch off a tree and start thrashing it with the branch and shouting at it and saying, why won't you, you know, why, why have you done this to me? Why have you broken down? And it seems to me that locking up people like Let's Be is very similar to that. We don't know why she did what she did. She'd be better off volunteering to be studied so that people could, you know, in return for a reduction in her sentence so that we could understand how her brain works. What cog has she got missing? What extra cog has she got? So that we can then learn more and understand She's very valuable to science, that girl. And I'm not talking about, you know, subjecting her to brain surgery and all that. I'm just talking about doing scans and asking her questions and just spending a lot of time with her, trying to, with her, with her cooperation in return for a reduced sentence get some people who are quite astute, you know, quite good at picking up what somebody's, what the truth of the, the matter is, rather than what they say, you know. I think dentists are quite good at this, you know, you, as dentists, you very quickly learn. And CCTV has showed us this, that almost always people lie. They make up events, or at the very least, they serve up they deliver some self-serving version of events which is later found on CCTV to be absolutely not what happened and what happened was what they didn't want everyone to know so as a dentist you you know you have to sort of want to start off with the idea that everybody lies everybody lies you know how often do you brush your teeth oh twice a day I mean that's the biggest and the most common lie. It's not the big, it's not the most serious, but it's the most prevalent. You know, how long since you've been to the dentist? Oh, I don't know. Probably a year. When it's five years. Do you eat any sweets? No. <laughs> Sugar-free, by the way. Sugar-free. Rhubarb and custard, are lovely. Mm. Mm. Just about to go. Let me crunch it because I've still got some teeth. So, but you know, the, the big fuss now is moving on to the fact that she works in a hospital where she was discovered, uncovered at an early stage 
as being implicated in the deaths of these babies, but the National Health Service managers covered it up. By which I mean they refused to believe the people who'd told them what they regarded as an unpalatable truth, which is that they had a a young girl on the staff that was uh, interested in killing babies for whatever reason. And uh, she said that she'd been bullied and they made the, you know, they, they apologised to her and offered to transfer her to a, a, a job where her talents would be more, um, uh, better utilised and more respected at a more prestigious hospital, etc. So, you know, with hindsight, I know I'm people say, well, it's easy with hindsight you to say all that, but actually it's, I'm not, I'm complaining about it being a general phenomenon. I don't think it's just a case of hindsight in, Let in the Let's Be case. I think it's a general problem across the NHS, this tendency to uh, close ranks and, uh, you know, say that the NHS is the best service in the world and a shining jewel in the nation's crown and uh, uh, risk of attack from all sides but mainly the private sector wants to get its hooks into the National Health Service. Well, I mean, it's hardly surprising. I mean, if they're paying, you know, suppliers three or four times the market rate for stuff, I, as a supplier, I'd be wanting to get me hooks into the NHS. So that's no, no, and then, <clears throat> There's a tendency now for uh, criminals in high-profile cases not to attend the court for sentencing, uh, uh, for, for the verdict and the sentencing. I think, obviously, their barrister says to them, look, you know, we, we've put up a, a, good, a good fight, we've done the best we can. Uh, you know, you're, there's no doubt that, that you're going to be found guilty. The only question is how long are you going to go away for? Um, and... Uh, in her case, probably a whole life tariff. So she's going to become the new Myra Hindley. And, uh, you know, they're going to lock her up and throw away the key. Well, at that point, there's no, you know, <clears throat> they brought in this uh, ability for the victims to come to court and say what uh, an impact the crime has had on them, or the victim impact statements. And I don't know whether it makes any difference to the sentencing. I mean, it could, I think possibly the public thinks that it makes a difference to the sentencing. But I think in many ways, it's just really to uh, allow the victims to, you know, who, who used to say, I don't feel that I've uh, had proper closure because nobody's really listened to me. Nobody is really, nobody really knows what actually happened, you know? And so they felt that it was appropriate for the court to spend several days um, to, to listen to the victims. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, but <clears throat> um, it's all very well. The, uh, the media doesn't report this stuff, to be quite honest with you, because it's quite harrowing and very emotional and, it's, and very cathartic for the parents of the babies, I should imagine, and quite right too. But the um, only people who have to sit there and listen to it, and you know, without having the option of um, of coming back when it's all over, is the judge and the um, and all the legal staff and the jurors, and and strangely, not the person who's just been convicted of the crime. Now, that I think that obviously people thought that that was part of the function of the victim impact statements was to explain to the person who committed the crime what the impact of their actions was and I'm sure that's right that that is what's supposed to happen in so for example some young scrote who has burgled 10 people and he and thinks it's just a case of forcing a lock and nicking a video recorder um, has to hear you know how this uh, the, the the, the old dear whose video recorder he nicked went into a spiral of depression and um, never left the house, you know, for the rest of her life and all that. Which he might, you know, he might. That might have some impact on him. 
but they want to um, drag Let's Be Along to listen to this. And she's got, at the moment, she's got every right not to go and no incentive to go. And now they're saying, oh, they ought to play it to her in her cell, which is, you know, it strikes me as, which is going very, we're going very Hannibal Lecter here. The, um, because if they uh, pass a law to force the criminal to attend the sentencing and listen to the victim statements, then, you know, you're going to get a load of people just standing there shouting their heads off, not shutting up, wanting to be removed from the court, not caring whether they're convicted of contempt, uh, happy to have the whole thing postponed a hundred times if necessary, uh, and not at all willing to cooperate, haranguing the judge about how the trial was unfair, haranguing the public about how they're innocent and they've been framed or mistreated. I mean, do you really want someone like that in court? Do you really want someone like that in court? So if you're going to force, if you're going to force them to attend, you're going to have to put them in some sort of Hannibal Lecter type a trolley with a face mask on that's with a gag, you know, in, in their ball gag in their mouth. So they can't, they can't, you know. <laughs> I mean, these people, do they think these things through? Do they not understand how playing the judge's verdict to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, to, to the <clears throat> criminal is exactly what happens in Silence of the Lambs, where the, um, the, the warden in the jail the, decides that uh, Lecter needs a television set outside his cell playing, uh, you know, religious, with religious programming on at top volume all the time. Uh, which le lecture, I think, if I remember correctly, regards as a petty annoyance. So, <clears throat> people's decision-making processes are, they, they lie, and then the decision-making processes are faulty. So, I sincerely hope they don't, you know, I mean, there, there'll be enough time for her in the years ahead to if she wants to uh, find out what other people think about her and what the judge said about her and stuff like that, then, um, you know, they can make the transcript available to her if she asks. If she doesn't, then, to be honest with you, I think, as far as her life's concerned, it's not really going to make much difference one way or the other, is it? But just remember, there could be someone in a hospital near you who sees, who's seeing bad practice short of actually killing people and I'm sure there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of potential for people to be killing people especially around the uh, care home business and retirement home business and uh, uh, residential care where people have uh, medically compromised stroke victims and stuff like that you know I saw my dad a couple of times in um, situations that were strange, do you know what I mean? Like, out of bed with the windows wide open in the hospital on the 10th floor. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean out of bed, I mean literally lying on the floor. And, <clears throat> and uh, you know, fallen over, black and blue from falling over with probably a, uh, some sort of crash fractured skull that was undiagnosed because I think everyone was just hoping that, you know, it was going to do him in. So, you have to be careful, you know. Don't trust anyone medically. There's a few wrong ones. Okay. It's a bit depressing. But, um, as I say, People don't always uh, say what they think. The the uh, and I think the management of this hospital is going to get into a lot of trouble because they um, they I think they should have known. If they didn't know, they should have known what was going on. But they they chose to close their eyes or just act completely dumb 
and as a result uh, children died more children had to die for, for their incompetence to be exposed right okay nice to see you see you soon bye